hello again and welcome back to my channel and if you're new welcome i realize this video is a little late um to be coming out for this season but i'm hoping it will inspire someone who's either working on or thinking about future landscaping and so if you haven't seen my first video please take a look like share and subscribe in that video i mentioned ways you could put your own personal touch on a new build without paying thousands of dollars in builders options you know, the builder's landscaping just didn't have that curb appeal, so after going through multiple design changes, I finally found the look. I did most of the work last year, which unfortunately, I didn't record everything, but I do have a few clips to show, and plus, I'll just tell you here what I did. I have to tell you, it wasn't easy, because first I had to use rope to create the design that I wanted in the yard, then I used a spade to cut the design, and then I had to till the soil, but check this out. There were no automated tillers available. And with the space being so narrow, I had to manually till it about eight to 12 inches deep. And after that, I added mostly black cow and a layer of weed control to the soil. I shoveled my own landscaping materials, such as rocks and mulch. And after I completed my design, I knew I wanted to create a tropical oasis in the back. This is where you'll see elephant ears, calla lilies, irises, three different types of ferns, Japanese, ostrich, and autumn, and a combination of impatience, petunias, pansies, and a mix of hybrids. I gotta tell you guys, you're in for an amazing treat. So sit back and enjoy the rest of the short video clips I have of myself in action. Comment down below because I love to hear from you. So I'll stop talking now, but I'll be jumping in and out periodically to give you guys updates on things I've done along the way. Enjoy. So here, I just finished planting the forsythias, and of course, I've already worked the products down into the soil. I'm just adding another layer on top of bone meal, peat moss, biotone, and black cow. Um, just add that additional layer of um, nutrients to those newly planted bushes. And here, I just added some red mulch, uh, one to, to keep the moisture in the soil um, protected, and to also give it that pop of color against those uh, dominant green leaves. So here I'm adding a mesh fence uh, to separate the persithias from this tree line, which is managed by HOA. And um, it's being overtaken by some weeds and maybe poison ivy. Um, and so for whatever reason, they did not continue that fence all the way down. And the mesh is a buffer for the forsythias as they continue to grow. And so you might ask, why plant those over there? Well, because there was no more space in the yard and plus I wanted to create a small hedge there uh, where that fence stopped. And quite frankly, who wants to look at those weeds all the time? Mm, not me. And, uh, and so this was the best space for them and adding those there will give it a pop of yellow, um, which will give it some contrast against all of that green. Let's keep going on the tour. 
So here is the big maple tree. Um, and you saw in the previous picture, the bed wasn't conducive to the space. So I expanded it um, manually by using a spade. Um, and then I cut those uh, yellow bushes down a little bit. Um, and again, I did this last year and unfortunately I did not record anything. Um, but we'd love to hear your feedback on how it turned out. All right, let's keep going. Ah, the lovely elephant ears. These are by far my favorite plants. Um, and as you can see, they've grown really, really fast over a short period of time. Um, so much so that they look like real people in the yard. Um, when I'm out there, folks stop and stare. They ask questions about them. And uh, so I'm just so excited to share um, the transformation of, of these lovely plants. And I'm just really excited about them. And, and I love the space uh, that they're in. It just really uh, complements that in, entire space there. So I'm really excited to show you guys the back. It was a lot of work, but I really love the way it turned out. And as you can see, the elephant ears there, um, the canovas, I ended up putting those in a pot because I'm not sure if they will survive the cold. Um, and so therefore we can cut them down and, and preserve them for next year. Um, but right there in that spot, my neighbor has a gutter that faces the fence line and it brings a lot of moisture. And, uh, and so after it rains, um, it, it's not a lake, but, and it doesn't run up against the house, but, uh, after doing some researching, we discovered that tropical flowers will survive in that type of, uh, environment. And, um, and plus like, so we got a couple of quotes, um, to put in a, a drainage there and it was cost over $500, which we did not want to pay. Um, but I have to tell you though, it does keep that grass looking really nice and green. Um, so don't give up if you're experiencing an issue um, like that. Uh, do a little research and, and try to fix your issue first. So here in the middle um, is where most of the tilling work um, took place. And unfortunately, um, a lot of my work was not recorded, but photographed because I did not anticipate I would have a YouTube channel. Um, but um, after doing all of that and planting everything, um, it took about 90 days, um, thereabout because this is a, uh, about a 40 foot, uh, length of space here. Um, and so I, I just really like the way this turned out. Um, if I'm outside, people will literally stop and stare and, um, they will compliment and ask questions about the flowers that I've planted. And, um, and even when I'm inside, um, looking out the kitchen window, um, I just love the way everything just turned out. It's just really nice and colorful and just all came together. And I, I love the fact that other people um, enjoy it just as much as I do. So I'm really excited to show you guys the front of the house because as I mentioned earlier, it's about that curb appeal. And here just kept it really simple. Just remove that. Uh, mulch and added river rock to both of the beds and then I added um, a combination of lavenders, azaleas, dalmatians, and lilies and as you can see on the corner there I added a dwarf maple just to complement the big maple that's uh, far, further out there in the yard and um, so I think it just all comes together and I'll stop talking and we'll keep touring the front of the house.
I'm really excited to show you guys the side of the house because remember in the beginning where I referenced the using the rope to create the design and then the spade to cut it out. Oh boy, I have to tell you that was a lot of work, but I really like the way it turned out and in the end it was well worth it. And uh, so I'm going to reveal it now and I hope you guys like it too. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked the video. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe and comment down below. And for those of you who saw my first video, just a reminder, I still have future videos coming just like this one uh, to show you some of the small updates I did to add my personal touch to my new home. And remember, design is what you make it. I hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.